Hello and welcome to the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant. Our guest today is Rochelle T. Parks and she is a wellness expert. Yes. Yes. And we're going to talk today about how food, nutrition is the foundation. Yes. Thank you for joining me today. Glad to be here. Okay, so let's start off by telling your story. Where did your wellness journey begin? Have you always been into health and wellness or did a particular episode in your life trigger this interest? Okay, so uh, that's a great question. So um, I would say it started when I was a little girl. Like I've always been interested in health and wellness. Um, so much so that I, I attended high school for the health professions. And so everybody knew Rochelle was going to medical school. I was gonna be the physician. And, and, and so although, so I grew up in Houston, Texas. So although I did not uh, go to medical school, um, the interest you know, of helping people, the interest of health and wellness and science never left me. So, so I just carried that on throughout my life. Uh, but growing up in the South, you know, uh, um, we ate bad. You know, everything was fried and um, really didn't know much about nutrition, um, but I was active as a child, uh, uh, very, you know, into sports and things like that. So I carried this on into my uh, college years, um, young and you're adult a Howard years. Grad. I am a Howard grad, absolutely. Um, so that's what brought me to the area. I attended Howard University, um, but I also enlisted in the military. Um, the Army Reserves initially while I was in school. And so, so I'm just um, eating what I knew to eat, um, which was, they call it the standard American diet, you know, processed food, sugar, fast food, soda, um, nothing that was really building my body. I didn't, unbeknownst to me though, I didn't know what was going on. So I'm just doing this. And so you fast forward, I uh, get married right out of college. Um, I'm in the military. Uh, I go on to become a commission officer. So now I'm a lieutenant. I have my first child in 1996. And uh, what changed my life was after I had my child, I struggled with passing our physical fitness test. And I said, okay, Rochelle, you got to get busy with this fitness like you're a leader, right? You can't do this. And so I really, really, like really uh, dug in into physical fitness and so much so I went on and did some competitive bodybuilding. And so I'm all into fitness, 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 and, and was, was doing well, excelling in my physical fitness. Meanwhile, I'm feeding my family um, standard American diet. And so uh, my husband is, is, is gaining weight and, and borderline hypertensive and um, uh, my son, uh, uh, you know, I'm feeding him trash. I'm sending, you know, Kool-Aid jammers and Dunkin' sticks and honey buns and this lunch and things like that. You know, it's just knowing, giving them what I knew to feed them. And so we progress. I have my second child in 2003. Now at this time, uh, my son probably had like five cavities by the age she, by the age of seven, he had five cavities. And I'm like, what is going on? And then my, my daughter's born and later on she has eczema. And I'm like, this is crazy. Uh, meanwhile, I'm excelling in my physical fitness. And so fast forward, we have our third child, okay, in 2009. And I'm pregnant with my third child and some friends of ours came by our house just out of the blue and brought me this book. And it was called Eat This and Live by Dr. Don Colbert. And I read, she said, read it, it will change your life. And I read the book and it was like the scales had been lifted off my eyes. And I realized that it really wasn't about the physical fitness, although you need it, it was about the food. And I said, wow, I've been killing my family. And that's literally what I, I told them. I have been killing you unknowingly um, by, by giving you the food that I was giving you. So we just changed. We changed immediately. Um, just did a 180 in what we were eating. We actually cleared out our cabinets and just started over. And I will tell you that although I was already excelling in my physical fitness, when I changed the fuel I was giving my body, my physical fitness went through the roof. And, um, well, and so, go ahead, go ahead. Didn't you have an episode? Absolutely. You had an episode with a your husband? Absolutely. So that is what put me on that thing to know that food is the foundation. That's when I knew it was food. So now I'm sharing this with people and I'm helping people in the military at my church. Um, so then you fast forward and we're in COVID. Um, April 5th of 2020, um, my husband was in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. And he was not a diagnosed diabetic before then. Um, and so leading up to that time, I was noticing symptoms. He was very thirsty. He was eating a lot of sweets. His vision was being affected. Um, he was using the bathroom a lot. And I was like, these are classic signs of diabetes. He was very lethargic. 
And so all of this training, everything that I had learned from since high school, I felt prepared me for that moment. And so I was able to get into the hospital in time um, and they were able to get his numbers under control. And um, he was in there, we went there April 5th and he was discharged on April 9th. While he was there though, um, they were telling him, Mr. Parks, you, you have to take this medication for the rest of your life. Metformin, um, insulin, sticking yourself four times in the stomach, you know, every day. And I was like, no, this can't be. I, I did not believe this is the life that God had called for us. And I believe he had given me the knowledge. And I said, no, while he was in the hospital, I was at home putting together a plan um, to change it when he, got, when he got out. And so he came home, said, Mr. Parks, you're gonna be in this medication for the rest of your life. He was discharged on April 9th of 2020. We came home, we immediately implemented the plan that I put together and April 17th was his last time taking medication and he has never, so he was on medication for eight days, has not touched it since. And that is what uh, just, you know, that was the catalyst. Um, my husband was like, Ro, we have to share this with the world. Like, I don't believe God spared me so I can keep this to myself and so we just start sharing it with everybody. So what does this plan include? Uh, eating God's food, <laughs> really. What is I eating know. God's so food? So God's food is uh, meat, fish, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grain, legumes. That's really. So you're not a vegetarian. I am not a vegetarian, not at all. That is not a requirement. And that's what most people think. To get healthy, you, ha you must become a vegetarian or a vegan, and that is not so. I'm not, never have been, and neither is my husband. Well, a lot of uh, people point out that there are, are, are just... Uh, uh, bad things mm -hmm. in eating meat. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that way. Well, you should definitely have a more plant-based diet. And so I, I didn't say that the, the, the uh, meal consisted of mostly meat, uh, but you can eat meat. Uh, but I do believe we should eat more vegetables, absolutely. You know, most people, a lot of people believe they're eating healthy and they're mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing when you talk to people? Um, just what you said. So people say they're eating healthy, but they're starting off their day with sugar, right? And so, so, so I don't want to give sugar a bad name. It's just that we're eating too much sugar. Like, so the average person, the average female should consume no more than say six teaspoons sugar, te six teaspoons of sugar a day. The average male, nine teaspoons. But on average, we're consuming about 50 teaspoons a day. Mm. So it's just wreaking havoc in the body. And so you're starting your day with people at Starbucks with coffee, um, creamers, sugars, or they're doing danishes, or, or even, even the oatmeal. People say, I'm doing oatmeal, but you know, it still, it still breaks down the sugar. So they put sugar in the oatmeal. Um, they, they do uh, orange juice. They say, I'm doing orange juice, but you know how much sugar is in a 12 ounce glass of orange juice? And so these are things that they're doing cereals. It's sugar. All these processed foods are just breaking down the sugar. But in their mind, they're eating healthy. Oh, I'm doing yogurt. Uh, Rosha, I'm doing yogurt, uh, a lot of sugar. I'm doing, but it's fruit in it. I'm doing fruit, but you're diabetic. Your A1C is already high. You need to stay out. So it's just these things that people think they're eating healthy, but they're really just consuming a lot of sugar. E even the vegans, they say, oh, I'm, I'm vegan. I'm like, no, but you're not doing more vegetables. You're just doing more carbs. So you're vegan, but you're doing pasta every day and, red, and bread and rice. And, and they say, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing meat, but you're doing sugar. I say keep the veggie and vegan, eat more vegetables and you're gonna be okay. How should that break down into your daily meals? Uh, I try to have vegetables every meal, honestly. I mean, even, even if I'm eating eggs uh, and some turkey sausage, you can saute some, some kale or spinach with it. You know, you really can do vegetables every meal. That's really gonna set you up uh, for success. But most people doing carbs and protein every meal or if they have protein most people are just doing carbs I would highly recommend people just incorporating vegetables with every meal with every meal how does this turn around um, some chronic diseases oh wow how can this how can this just what you eat by what you eat how were you able to rid your husband of diabetes so here it is simply if I so I call this the cell theory right so I'm gonna give you a little biology lesson really in about two minutes, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So if you break us down to our most basic level, we're made up of cells, right? Break the body down, we're made up of cells. So cells is the basis of all living things. So you break us down to our most basic level, we're made up of cells. So cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, organ systems make up the organism, right? That is how it flows. So you can't have a healthy organism. The organism is the person. 
if you don't have healthy organ systems, health, uh, organ systems like your digestive system, respiratory system, central nervous system, like it's 14 of them, like these systems, uh, reproductive system, right? You can't have a healthy reproductive system unless you have healthy organs. Healthy organs, your liver, your lungs, your heart, like your skin, all these are organs. You can't have healthy organs unless you have healthy tissues, okay? Well, what makes up healthy tissues? Healthy cells. How do you get healthy cells? from the nutrients, the food that you eat. So that's why I say food is the foundation, right? I read once, uh, and it always stuck with me, it says uh, it takes 19 essential vitamins and minerals with nine amino acids with a perfect protein to make a perfect cell. I know, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> but the point of it is if you're, if you're missing one nutrient, you're making imperfect cells for seven days, and those cells manifest into disease. So people say, well, Rochelle, where, where do the nutrients come from? From the food that you eat. So that's why I say food is the foundation. I don't care, like it's one root cause of disease, one, and that's malfunctioning of cells. And the cells, that's why I say your age goes as your cells go. Like, like health starts at the cellular level. So when people try to go to the doctor, because they have a heart condition, whatever, they give them medication, that's, they're not healing the heart, they're treating the heart. To heal the heart, you have to go back to the food, right? You have to go back to the foundation, to the root. The root cause is what you're feeding your body. And so what happened to my husband, so um, about these cells, we're, we're making 3.8 million new cells every second. That's how, that's how when it says we're, we're, we're wonderfully made, right? Like that's how God made our bodies. 3.8 million new cells every second. Imagine if, you're, if you stop giving your body the, uh, the, the cheeseburgers and fries, right? In the, in the Starbucks and you start giving it, you know, more vegetables, okay? More, more fruits, more, more, more lean protein. Imagine the cells that are being generated and those cells will make healthy tissues, which will also start making healthy, you know, organs, right? Because as those, every day, the cells are dying. So as they're, they're being replaced by new cells, if you're replacing them with healthy cells, that's how you're repairing your organs, right? We're living in a fast food. Mm -hmm environment mm -hmm. where everyone wants everything immediately. Mm -hmm. How long does this take? Oh, this How can happen immediately. How long would it take to life around? Immediately. I told you I got my husband off medication eight days. That's pretty quickly. I've gotten people off medication one day, two day, three day. It's just, you know, everybody is different, but literally the doctors were like, what is going on? What is she feeding you? He said, God's food. We were just eating food. It was more about what was he not eating? He was no longer doing the sodas. He, he started moving his body. He started drinking more water. He, st he started give, getting rid of, the, I call them uh, uh, lab experiments, you know, processed foods. Why do you call them lab experiments? Because it's not real food, right? Real food will, will rot. Real food will spoil real food, you know, but if you get a um, McDonald's fry and leave it under your, under your, under your uh, car, you know, it's, you can stand there a year, nothing will happen to it. But you go get a fresh potato, okay, and you leave it sitting in your pantry, it'll start to bud, right? You know, and so real food will rot and spoil. So anything on the shelf, right? If, if today, whatever today it is, and you look at the date of something on the shelf and it says it's expiring next year, that's not real food. That's a lab experiment, right? So it can't be, it can't, we should give our bodies real food, live food. Anything on the shelf is dead. It has no nutritional value. Well, what do you say to people who say in this economy, mm -hmm. eating uh, uh, fresh food, eating from the earth is expensive. Mm -hmm. I can buy a can of string beans and it'll be cheaper than buying a pound. Well, I will say this. Uh, first of all, I, I think you're expensive, right? Like we're, we're worth it. I mean, that's, that's honestly what I took because I get that all the time and we're worth it. And there are things that we can buy that are not as expensive. Like you can get a, a bag of beans versus getting canned beans, okay? Get a, a bag of beans a, and make a pot of beans, that's gonna last you a week. That's gonna be healthier than getting the beans out of a can that's filled with sodium, okay? Um, and it's really not that expensive to go buy fresh vegetables, right? To make a salad, a huge salad. And not only that, when you're eating whole food, God's food, um, more fruits and vegetables, they're more nutrient dense. So they're gonna be more satisfying. It's gonna last longer. You go get some Chinese food or whatever, that's, you eat that and you're hungry the next hour. So more nutrient dense food will be low in calorie, but high in nutrients. 
so it's going to serve your body well. You're going to feel better almost immediately. Like almost people, how, how, long, how long will I feel? Immediately. Immediately. When you take out the sugar and start giving your body a uh, 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 movement, water, nutrient-dense foods, you feel the difference immediately. You sleep better. Like, you know, people say, I get up in the middle of the night. But when you start eating God's food, oh, I slept through the night. Oh, I couldn't walk up and down the steps. Now I'm going up and down the steps with no problem, you know. Now you and I talk, we're talking about this before mm -hmm. we started the show. Is there a percentage where it's 80% uh, nutrients and 20% ex exercise, 10% water? Is there a breakdown of how much of how much of this, this, and this yeah, great that question. you need to do? Great question. So generally speaking, people say 80% nutrition, 20% exercise generally speaking, right? But the, the, the analogy I like to use um, to give people an idea of what's going on is, is I say you have a health bank account, much like you have a financial bank account. So you have a financial bank account, you make um, deposits, right, money, right? And so to make sure your account stays in the black. And if you, if you have $100 in the bank, well, you can't go make a $200 purchase, right? You, you can't do it. Same thing, you have a health bank account. You have to make healthy deposits into your health bank account. Healthy deposits will include um, eating God's food, drinking water, exercising, um, sleep, uh, prayer. Like these are healthy deposits into your health bank account. Unhealthy withdrawals would include uh, sugar, um, no exercise, um, processed food, fast food. Like that's unhealthy, right, withdrawals. So if you have more unhealthy withdrawals than you do healthy deposits, you're going to be in the red. Right. And so I would consider someone who's, you know, diabetic or high blood pressure, you know, uh, high. They're in the red. So we have to reverse that. And you can reverse it easily just by making more healthy deposits and less of the unhealthy withdrawals. And now when I tell you, um, it's I know it seems like that's too simple because it is. It really is that simple because I've helped hundreds and thousands of people do the same. And that's all it takes. Is it ever um, too late? You feel like, well, Never. I'm at this point in my life and I've been doing this, I've been smoking, drinking, uh, eating uh, processed foods all my life. Nope, never too late because of the cell theory. Remember I said 3.8 million new cells, okay, every second. That's a lot of cells. Every second, that's how many cells are being replaced in your body. So if you just change the input, right? Do you know how fast that is? That's a lot going on. That's how, like in, in, in uh, three days, you're building almost a trillion cells in three days. That's a lot. That's a lot going on in your body. And so it's never too late. It's never, I've, I've helped people that were on medication for over 30 years get off medication. I've, I've worked with uh, people who were in their 80s, still uh, got off medication. It's never too late, never ever. As long as you have breath in your body, there's, there's always hope. Well, you know, in church, they talk about backsliders. Mm -hmm. What happens if you backslide? Well, at least you know what to do. So I don't know, I don't know when you say backslide because Meaning it starts you, with the... You um, start on the program, everything's going well, and then you say, oh, I can cheat a little bit here, I can cheat a little bit there. Next thing you know, you're back to where you started. Yeah. Well, part of this is about having a mindset transformation. So it's not a diet, right? So I don't even consider it backslide if a person is healed, say they're no longer diabetic or high blood pressure, whatever it is they were dealing with, and they're healed, and they decide to get a burger and fries, that's not backsliding. That's just, you can do that now. You, you have a healed body. It can take that now. It can t that's not backsliding. That's part of the lifestyle, because the lifestyle is not about being perfect. It really isn't. So have, have you seen people who have I mean, because we've seen even with things like weight loss surgeries, or they used to have those shows a couple of years mm -hmm, ago mm -hmm. where you do two hours, people are living these unrealistic lives, mm -hmm. doing two hours of exercise uh -huh. per day, this, that, and the other thing, yeah. and they go back to their regular life. And next thing you know, they're back to the weight they started. Yeah, so that's the thing, because this is, this is what I teach my people, right? The it's, biggest loser. I was trying to think. Yeah, of I knew what you okay. meant. The biggest loser. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so I, I, I teach them about be, do, have, right? So you must become the person that can do the thing consistently so you can have these results forever. And most people that are on the yo-yo, they just focus on the doing. Like, just tell me what to do. And they do it and they get the results, right? 
but because they never became the person they needed to become, they don't keep the results. And so you must become a different person. So it's a mindset transformation. I tell people it's not a mindset shift because when you shift, you shift back, but you have to be transformed. Like you have to have a different relationship with food, right? You have to recognize food is fuel. It's not for your pleasure. It's for your, it's for your fuel. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy it, but its primary purpose is for your fuel. It's to fuel our bodies. And so it, so it, it calls for a different mindset. Um, and so when you think differently, you know, and that's what this is about, the I am the hope. Right. That's having that's like I am the hope. I am the catalyst for change in my anybody that's in my sphere of influence. Now, you're having a conference or you're part of a conference that's yes. going to be dealing with that. Tell us about. That. Yes. Yes. So I am the hope. So it is my conference, my very first in-person conference uh, live in Orlando, Florida. I am the hope. Uh, and I tell people it's not it's not it's more than the message it's a movement. And so I am the hope. Um, it's based on scripture, Romans 8, 28 through 30, basically um, saying that like I am the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Like I, God is predestined to be the change. You can be the catalyst of change for your entire family. Cause many of us, many families are stricken with these things that we think run in our families. And this, this is not about our bloodline. This is more about lifestyle. And so when we change, the people around us will change, right? So I am the hope, you are the hope, we are the hope for generational health in our families. So what's going to be happening? Oh, I'm going to teach people, teach people about how they can reverse chronic uh, disease in their families, how they can break these generational curses, how they can um, add productivity, increase their productivity and energy in their lives. Um, show them how to cook, you know, healthier meals. Um, and we're going to have many, many testimonies there that can attest to um, what I'm saying is true. People that have been living this life, not just for six months or a year, but multiple years that have been doing this. Uh, and so it's just going to be a great um it's going to be a great time of celebration of life um of hope because uh, so many people they don't have any hope they they've been told you're going to be on this medication for the rest of your life they've been told there's no hope for you it's too late for you and i know that that's not true right because i've seen it happen in my own life with my husband but thousands of others and so i just need people to get there um it's going to be amazing and they're going to walk away changed it's going to be a transformation here. So there will be transformation in that room, and they're going to go back to wherever they live and be the hope for the generational health in their own family. And I think that's where it starts with what we teach yeah. our children. Amen. Um, and, and, and letting them pass it on to the next generation. And then because we eat like our parents ate. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, boy, they have some good food out in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're known for eating. But, but we are known like for that. Like you said, it's like you, you grow up eating these foods, fried foods, lots of carbs, lots of sugar. My mother used to dump two cups of sugar in the in the Kool-Aid. Yeah. And we were tearing, tearing that it up. sugar up. That's right. We didn't know. That's right. But now we do. Now we do. And I say when you know better you do better, right? When you do better, you feel better. And when you feel better, you live better. Now, what have you seen the people coming to you? Is there a profile of, of kind of the average person who comes yep. to you and says, hey, I need this, tell us yeah. about that. So usually uh, women uh, in their 40s, you know, uh, cause I'm, you know, I don't necessarily appeal to the young people cause they think they're invincible. Uh, but normally 40 and above uh, women, some men too, but women who are just that, they're hurting their bodies hurt, they don't sleep well, they're dealing with migraine headaches, they're dealing with high blood pressure, obesity, uh, uh, diabetes, high cholesterol, like the typical things. I mean, and so I, when I speak to that, the arthritis, the knees, the, you know, uh, they's like, oh yeah, I have all of that. Everything you said, I have. And, they, and they're, they're caretake, you know, caretakers, um, and they're trying to help everybody else, but they're suffering. They're suffering in silence. And, and they're like, when they see me, they say, I, I need help. I'm tired of living this way, but they've been living that way for years. Going and you also talked about the, just the mental component yeah. to it all. It's not just, to, but you've got to get the right mindset. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that comes with community. You know, I provide a community, so it's not just me. I have a team uh, and the whole community, so everybody supports one another, you know, and it's, it, I am a believer, so, you know, there's prayer and there's, there's uh, encouragement and, um, yeah, it's all of that. So I tell people, if you, 
when you get into the in the rowboat, I call it when you get in the rowboat, not only do you improve your your your, your external physical well being, but also your internal spiritual well being as well. Now we're gonna put the information uh, about the conference at the end of the program. So if people are interested, they could go to your website or wherever. So it's a three day conference. How long is so it? So it's a one day, one day conference in sep okay. uh, September thirtieth, um, Orlando, Florida. Uh, but they also, you know, I do the master class every every Tuesday. That's free. The free master class is free, is virtual. And um, what do you do? And in so the in there class? again, I'm teaching people how to eat, teaching people how to reverse. I'm really showing them why they're sick because most people don't realize that they're sick. They don't. They don't either. They don't realize they're sick, or they don't think that they can get better. And so I'm showing them why they're sick, like making it make sense, and then showing them what to do to reverse it. And so all that happens in, on my uh, master class, and it's amazing. People come and I say, I've never heard it. Set that like my doctor never told me that I've never seen it explained that way that makes sense and it's like an hour long or? it's about an hour it's, it's close to two hours long okay. it's close to two hours long but you just sit in front of the computer and um, listen to culture I got slides and, and it's very interactive you know I'm talking to the people I mean of course I can't hear them, but I, I talk to the people <laughs> talking to you uh, and uh, yeah it's very people taking notes and everything I encourage them to take notes yeah it's very informative and, and the fact that you said that, that people are not doing this alone, because a lot of times you, you, people need a community, a community to say, hey, you can do this, I'm going through what That's you're right. going through. That's right. I was able to tur uh, turn my life That's around right. That's right. through this. That's right. So the fact that you've got the community involved. It makes all the difference. As well. Absolutely. And you mentioned, <clears throat> this kind of off, you mentioned also sleep. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not sleep and that I mean you have people don't have any idea how important that is mm -hmm. to be able to rest your body mm -hmm. to to give your body the right nutrients of course but to rest your body eating the water so it's a lot of things go hand in hand absolutely because what people don't realize is the reason why they're not sleeping is because they're not eating the right foods see people people think oh because I'm working hard no, no no it's because of what you're eating 100% of the time, 100% of the time, when the people join the program and they start implementing these things, they say, wow, I used to get up three or four times, now I sleep. One, one of my uh, clients said, Rosha, if you, you could steal the, 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 uh, the mattress from under me and I wouldn't <laughs> feel it, you know? But she said, but before she was getting up three or four times a night. Wow. So they don't realize, like food, they don't realize the impact food is having on how they feel every single day. Well, Rochelle T. Parks, Good luck with uh, the, the event that you're getting ready to have. Yes. Also, good luck with getting this country as healthy yes. <laughs> as yes. we can. Yes. I'm so glad you were able to join us. I'm so glad to be here. Any Thank closing you so much. words? You got 10 seconds. Closing words. When you give your body what it needs to thrive, it will. Very good. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching the Sisters for Fitness Wellness Show. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant with Rochelle T. Parks. We will put her information at the end of the program so that you can get in touch with her as you would like to. Have a great day, everybody. I'm Stephanie Gaines Bryant.